Hey, TikTok family, this is Renard Boyce of Temple Mortgage. Talking about another segment of family matters, family matters. What in the world are you doing with your money? You know, yesterday, I'm going to take my time. I had the occasion, Phil. It was the day before yesterday. And I was listening to the Karen Hunter show. So I'm going to tell you now, I'm a big fan of Karen Hunter, but I firmly plan to throw her under the bus in the next 30 seconds or less. And she had a guest on. I forgot the lady's name. You can go back two or three days ago. And... The subject was about marriage and monogamy. And is monogamy still vital or um, is, it, is there use for monogamy? Is it possible? That was it. That's the subject. Now, possible, that's debatable. Depends on the age of the man, I'm sure. Depends on his upbringing. Young men have a lot more fire than older men. I think as men get older, they have the capacity to be monogamous far more than they were younger because men are just wired that way. I'm going to be straight up. I'm a Christian man, man of the gospel, all of that, but I operated a lot more different in my younger years than I do now, especially when I wasn't saved. You know, I was out there carrying on. I went to Norfolk State University, student body president. You know, people love power. And, um, Sometimes I come off, they'd be laying across the desk. I'm just saying what the Lord loves best. And I certainly didn't tell them they had to leave. So, as men get older, now they got these little blue pills up for these brothers. And so now old men are seeing, uh, getting their help. <laughs> you know, feel my strength coming on, so to speak. So that's that's my take on monogamy. That's, that's a personal thing. Um, but then this whole thing of the open marriage, and that's where I'm going to go. I'm leaning into that segment, part of her segment. And it's going to make sense. It is a Money Matters uh, segment, and you'll see why very soon. So this woman was saying that monogamy, Karen Hunter was basically saying that maybe that's passe. But then they were speaking against marriage. And that's where the, the car jumped off the road for me. And then she attacked the institution of marriage, basically, she and her guest, although her guest was married, Karen Hunter was previously married. And then she attacked or made, poked fun at the whole notion of Christ being a single man. And she toyed and made the comment of him hanging out with 12 other men and being a single man and what's up with that. And at that point I became enraged, I became incensed. I wanted to get through that phone but I couldn't. Uh, to call her, to express the insult that she insulted zillions of Christians by even making any type of suggestion that our Lord and Savior would be a homosexual. Yes, I understand that he was single. Yes, it was unheard of for a 30-year-old man who's a rabbi because he was a priest. But he was also a Levite. So maybe she doesn't understand what a Levite is. A Levite like Sancho does not cut his hair does not drink the, the fruit of the vine, does not drink wine. So if you remember the wedding feast of Canaan, you see that he made the wine. You never see that he drank the wine. So when you start coming for me or coming for our, our space and our belief system, that Karen, I'm going to come for you because you're confusing a lot of people, you and your twisted guest who was married but attacking marriage, attacking men who choose not to be monogamous and then kind of telling women with your stupid self that it's passe now let me help you with something i'm a father and a grandfather and i'm gonna be straight up with you ladies the only person that wins is us the man when you decide to be with us and you don't believe in benefit of marriage and people are trying to say well what what difference does it make it makes every difference and let me go back to the Jesus thing for a second. This is the biggest thing, and the Holy Spirit just reminded me. The reason that Jesus was not married, dumb, dumb, Karen Hunter, dumb, dumb, trying not to cuss, so mad at you, was that he was already married. He was betrothed to his church. His church was betrothed to him. Now, you said you somewhat of a Bible scholar. I don't think so, because you. how did you miss that one? Clearly states his position and in the, in the, in the, I believe it's the fifth, uh, the last chapter of, of Ephesians, I think the 25th chapter, starting around the fifth verse, where he shows how the man symbolically represents Christ in the marriage and Christ bearing marriage to the church, and he died for his bride, and he and he washes her through the cleansing of the word. So is the man called to be priest in his house and to wash his wife through the cleansing of the word. 
So every man is called to be priest in his house, king, provider, protector. Four pillars of a man, priest, king, protector, provider. But the problem is many sisters only want provider. <laughs> That's another subject, another story, another time. But I got it out there, and you know I ain't lying. So ladies, if you want to listen to these super feminists like Karen Hunter and other persons telling you that marriage is pot, pot pass a, I believe the Karen Hunter because she's divorced probably has an issue. And I get tired of these broken ass women and broken ass men because you broke on the inside. Go get counseling. Because since you have a platform, you have to be careful with the rhetoric you espouse out of your mouth. And then to, to, to insinuate because Christ hung out with 12 men. Do you know that God destroyed two cities for the act of homosexuality? Dumb, dumb. Destroyed the whole city. And he said, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be. He was there in the beginning. So when he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Come on, however you want to pronounce it. For the act of sodomy. For homosexuality. Because it was so rampant and so loose. And no, I do not hate homosexual. They ain't got nothing to do with that. But I'm a man of God and I believe in the biblical model. And I'm not afraid to stand up. Because if you deny me before men, I deny you before my father. And we got to stand up real men. Because the Bible said in the last days... Uh, it, it will, the, the devil will make uh, sin uh, seem, seem fair seeming. He'll make, he'll make fun of it. He'll make you laugh at it. Niggas right here putting on dresses. Tyler Perry acting out his alter ego as a, as a woman. You live through that woman. And you laugh at it. But that's a man in drag. Now come on, let's just be honest with it. Come on now. Ain't nothing but a man in drag. And then every, every program he make, the woman, there got to be a black woman that's a hoe. A black woman with loose morals. A, a black woman and then a black man that has no decency. And you got to have explicit sex scenes. And as much as God has blessed you, don't you think with all that money you could pour, put forth a better image of your people? You talked about Bill Cosby like a dog. But how many people went to college as a result of the Cosby show? How many people went to college as a, as a result of the different world? Because he put forth an image. And it wasn't about him being a doctor, but he said it was normal. It wasn't about Claire Hustle being a lawyer, but he made it normal. Because there are many black doctors and lawyers and energies and mortgage bankers and company owners. We're doing the damn thing. But the problem is those who have license misappropriate the license and put your own people out there as pimps, hoes. So it's not the white man. It's not Hollywood. It's cats like Tyler. You got to have a, 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 a sex scene. In every movie, and it's got to be a man or a woman, that's your thing. That's your leading character. You have, and we've had black senators. We've had, oh, so much his, historical things we've done. You don't touch none of that. You don't touch anything to put your people in a positive light. And just like Oprah with her confused self, everything she started in had a black man and a negative image. Come on, let's talk about it. Everything Oprah Winfrey put her hand on showed a black man doing something destructive. Look at Mr. in the color purple. A misogynistic, abusive, rapist, molester. Although they married women much younger than. You know, but he, 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 look at Mr. Then him and the, and the guy putting eggs on each other head when Sugar Avery got a husband. And then the daddy, he'll preach it, but he unforgiving. Where is the positive male role model in that movie? Think about it. She has never acted in anything. And then she gets something popular. She got to be the damn help in the butler. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it. That's true. Now here Tyler comes with a powerful license. And how does this relate to money matters? Because we are now attacking the very institution upon which legacy is built. Dumbass Karen Hunter. Yeah, I had to get it out. Sorry. Forgive me, Lord. If we talk about legacy building and wealth building in the black community, where do legacies come from? Families. Don't you need a family to leave an inheritance, to have a legacy? Two men can't provide or can't pro produce a legacy. Two women can't produce a legacy. And you are making a mockery of the institution that God provided and that it, he ordained because he came for what? His church. So when you poke fun and then you say you're a Christian, that, uh, a whole lot of people probably didn't know how to articulate it because I listened to Karen Hunter trip people up. You know she has a law degree and get all slick 
and, and attack, you know, doing them little lawyer, legalistic thing. But say, I'm the right brother for you. I'd love for you to invite me on. And don't have no other guests because I'd take you toe to toe, sweetie. I'll baptize you and bring you back. You got the right brother. I'd love to get on the show. And I don't need it for advertising and publicity. I'd like to talk to you. And find out what's wrong with you. And so sisters, don't listen to that foolishness. If you're good enough for him to bounce up and down on, you're good enough for him to marry. Don't buy no house with a man that's not your husband. Right? That's right. Did I say it? That's the truth. Don't buy no house. Because guess what? I did a lecture many years ago on the radio called a marriage is a what? Covenant. And you may not be married, but you damn sure married to that, to that, to that deed and to that note. Mm -hmm. To that note. For 30 years. There ain't no death do its part. Death don't release you from that. Because then that, that debt, debt well, your family will inherit it if you don't have the type of insurance or to pay it off. Mortgage company won't they money. So then you buy the house. The house goes up in equity. You're not his wife, but he's 50% owner of your property. This is why marriage matters. Where do children how do they how do they get that identity from their daddy in the Bible? Why did why did Joseph know? Now now Esau, why did Esau cry and say, Is it not a blessing for me? Because Jacob had stole his birthright. And he cried out, Is there not a blessing for me? And why did he cry out? Because the blessing comes from your daddy. Yeah. 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 I don't care how feminist you become. Your blessing biblically comes from your daddy. Yes, it does. And God is holding men accountable. And every time you allow somebody to lay up in your bed and you share your finances and let him put you in all them old twisted positions without benefit of marriage, you know that you are promoting the weakening of men. Because you ain't asking to be no man. Because a man provides. He gets up. He goes to work. He provides. It's in the Bible. By the sweat of your brow, so shall you eat. I don't care if you're a mortgage banker. I don't care if you got five multiple businesses like Philip. I don't care what you do, but you got to get up and provide. My uncle used to say you got to get up and meet that mule. And we are allowing men not to have to meet the mule because we're falling for this notion that marriage is passe. It is not. That's what the devil is saying. And they got black women on platforms, hurt, injured women teaching younger women foolishness. I'm a black man and I'm telling you, you should marry if he's the right man. There's a benefit to marriage. Marriage is ordained. There's a blessing. I was married. Wish I hadn't got a divorce, but, you know, things happen between us. But let me tell you something I learned. I never made more money than when I was married. Now, I ain't the only reason I want to get married again. But my marriage was blessed. Blessed. I'm talking about fifty, sixty thousand dollars a month. Blessed. Drug dealer money, hundred thousand dollars a month. Blessed. He blessed me. Owning houses and land. Smart woman. Blessed me. Blessed us. Oh yeah, that's a blessing in marriage. Marriage is un or ordained of God. It's a holy institution. And there's some things you would never achieve by yourself as well as you will because you got the covering. You have the institution, and God backs it. Now, if anything, I want to be on the side of God, not Karen Hunter. I hope these words have found you well. Play this over and over. Play it for your girlfriends. Play it for the younger sisters that a black man is telling black women, don't live with no man that ain't your husband. All women, all women, black, brown, all y'all. Don't sit there and, and buy nothing with no man that's not your husband. You, we talking about legacy and wealth. Legacy comes from family. You got to have a family to have a legacy. And let me say this before I close. If you out there doing what you're doing, man, if you know you ain't no straight up real man, stop infecting these women. Come on now, let's have some real talk about it. Because that's destroying black wealth and black families too. You infecting her. Where, 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 what is, what is the new thing? Her business is back on the rise and there's another one that's on the rise. Which one is it, Brother Minister Philip? I don't remember. It's a couple of them. STDs on the rise. In, in, in the single heterosexual female community. So that means somebody you sleeping with is sleeping with a damn man. Let's just call it out. But you don't believe in marriage. But everybody want to be an individual. But guess what? You got to give up some of the individuality to be a man of God, to be a woman of God. And Karen Hunter, that's what it comes down to. And that's what it comes down to people. Choose this day who you're going to serve.
That's what he said. Choose this day who you're going to serve. And that's a me and my house. I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to say what God say. I'm going to repeat what God say do. And I ain't going to put on no dress. And I ain't going to laugh at nobody putting on no dress. When your, when your grandson come out the room with some high heels on, talking about, look, daddy, I'm Tyler Perry. That's what General Gina said. And I stand for it. It is an abomination for a man to wear anything that pertains to a woman. That's in the book of Leviticus. As is a woman for a man. I ain't putting on no dress. I don't hang out with brothers that put on dresses. I don't want no men around me to put on dresses. I don't want no confused people in my life. I pray for you. I love you. As my brother, sister, doesn't mean I cannot love you because you have a different choice. But I'm not going to be afraid to stand up what I believe and why marriage is important and how these other facets of life are destructive to the very institution that God created. Marriage. His church. And if you don't even believe in God, marriage is good. Look at the failure rate of black girls and black boys of all children when the father's absent. And you know for yourself, sisters, there comes a point in time where that boy gets to a certain age when he needs some leather on that high patch. And you can't raise a man like another man can. Our voices are different. The way we look at them is different. The way we talk to them is different. And they're going to do what we say. And they're going to do it the first time. They ain't going to play with daddy. Not real daddy. I got a grandson. He don't play with Papa. He he tries his way, but when Papa gets serious with him, he, he calms that hip on down because Papa ain't playing. We need men. We need our protectors. Brothers, let's, let's come back and protect our women. Let's protect this generation. Let's not let our women go unprotected, uncovered, unloved. That's for all men. And don't, don't, don't be no dog running around. What's cute about that? Like that silly tale Nick Cannon. What is cute about you got a baby all over town and you ain't married to nobody? And look, dumb, dumb. Silly woman, if you already got three and he ain't married none of them, what you think's gonna happen to you? Now that's where the wealth is going. And he's talking about he can't afford to pay child support. I guess he can't, but guess what? Stop having babies out of wedlock. The child confused. House look like the damn rainbow coalition. Black, brown, high yellow, all that old stuff. Chinese babies. It's nothing wrong with the baby, but it's the wrong fact that now these babies, especially young black men, have an identity crisis because they don't know who their daddy is. And lots of black men, LeBron James, including Renard Boyce, even though my parents are married, they divorced very early. A lot of black men don't have their, fam their fathers in their life, and they grew up confused. And, the, and God did not create the woman to wear the crown. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. How much heavy if it has got to wear two crowns? Stop giving your best away to these men. He ain't going to plan on marrying you. Put him on out of there. And wait. Don't be desperate. God has sent you the right man. I, and I, I'm not going to talk about interracial marriage because you marry who you love. But marry the right man and marry a good man. I do believe in black love. And I do believe black love is in jeopardy. But I believe in marrying the person that you love. But I do believe in marriage. It has far more benefits than the devil wants you to believe. And Karen Hunter, you owe the Christian nation and my God an apology. I'm very disappointed in you. I'm suggesting my God hung out with 12 men and what's up with that? You're going to see what's up with it when you start smelling your hand pots in hell. Be blessed.